G'day guys, James from Spares Box here. Today we're going to go through a couple of things that you yourself can look for when shopping for a used car. As most of you already know, first impressions are everything when it comes to buying a car. Uh, most people decide whether or not they like a car before they've even spoken to the person selling it as soon as they see it parked in the driveway. A good indicator of um, a car's condition is the front bumper. While people do have it repainted to sell a car, often, you know, older cars will be covered in stone chips and the first place I look is there. With modern cars, rust is less of an issue. On older cars, it is way more prominent, but you wanna be checking in sort of the major problem areas, that is around windows and rain gutters, especially the lower sections where water can catch, as well as the inner guards, particularly behind the front and rear, rear wheels in these gaps here. Now, again, most modern cars have plastic inner liners that are quite good at keeping crap out, but on older cars, it can certainly be a common problem. Now, something that people don't really consider is the keys a car comes with. First of all, how many, as keys are quite expensive to replace on modern day cars like this A-Bath here. Um, second of all, whether it's a factory key, again, because if you don't have the car's original key, having a new key cut and coded can be very costly. And of course, the small matter of whether or not the key works. So tire wear is a really obvious one and most people know to look at this when they shop for a car and obviously if tires are worn they're an easy thing to go and get replaced at your local tire shop um, obviously it cost now all tires have a little indicator here that little ridge across the center of the tire indicating the wear now these tires as they are now are almost new this is what an almost new tire looks like um, on top of looking at where the indicators are thank you Ooh, dooey. Just shouldn't be behind the wheel. Zero confidence. Anyway, we'll do this again. As soon as the tread is worn down to that indicator, they are therefore illegal and need replacing. Again, that's something that's really easy to do that most people have done before and know how to do, but it is worth factoring into what you pay for the vehicle. Make sure to check this front and rear and to check that the wear is reasonably consistent, edge to edge on the tire, as that can indicate either incorrect tire pressures or a car in need of a wheel alignment. Another thing worth considering is that the car has its factory equipped toolkit for the spare. If you're looking at a vehicle that has aftermarket wheels on it, it's worth considering that the factory lug nut tool may not fit the lug nuts on your new wheels. In the case of a small car like this, you don't get a spare tire, you get a small 12 volt compressor. Now, log books are something that everybody knows to check when shopping for a relatively modern car like this. And this car has a full service history. It is worth taking with a grain of salt, however, as while a car may have had regular servicing, and that is great, if something like brake fluid has a scheduled interval of 40,000 kilometers, without receipts, even though the 40,000 K service may be stamped, you have no evidence as to whether the brake fluid was actually changed on time. We're doing another video on in-depth servicing after buying a second-hand car. You can find that video in one of the corners on your screen. Now, most people will know to look under a car and see if it's leaking any fluids when they go to inspect it. With modern cars like this, quite often they'll have very large plastic under trays and doesn't afford you much of a view from underneath. However, when looking from above, under the bonnet, the obvious things are what you should be looking at, that being fluid levels. Brake fluid, quite often this is the clutch fluid as well. Coolant, and obviously engine oil. On a lot of modern day small turbocharged engines, they do consume oil, it's quite normal. A car that has been left to get down to the low mark on its dipstick indicates a car that doesn't get regularly looked after. A misconception when checking engine oil is the color. People take dark colored engine oil as a bad thing. That's the engine oil doing its job. So while clear engine oil is all well and good, dark engine oil isn't necessarily a problem. It just indicates that the engine oil that is in there is doing its job and removing all, that, all those contaminants from inside the engine. It's at this point during the inspection that I like to start the car up and let it get up to temperature, taking the opportunity to listen for any wayward noises in the engine bay. And you don't have to be a mechanic to know when something sounds wrong. You're listening for any squeaks, clunks, clatterings or knocks. Um, everyone knows what a smooth running engine sounds like and anything else could be potentially disastrous. Keeping in mind that when starting the car up, if the car's already warm, the, the seller may be trying to cover up a cold start issue or a cold running issue. It may also be their daily drive, but it's worth considering.
Now in the case of this Abarth here, it idles beautifully, it sounds quiet, and this is exactly what it should be like. I'm gonna jump into the car, put my seatbelt on, or taking the opportunity to make sure that the seatbelts are in good condition and latch properly. I'm gonna get out on the road and test drive the car. sort of thing that can be easily rectified and um, it'll just simply come down to yourself and the um, seller to negotiate. So when the engine's up to temp, you want to make sure that the engine performs as it should, cools nice and smooth, performs well. Um, any issues here can be potentially disastrous but you want to make sure you're buying something where the engine is of um, sound performance. Any misfires, hesitations and things like that can come from a myriad of problems, from $2 fixes to $2,000 fixes. This car performs quite well. Um, these are generally pretty good cars. And this one is no exception. It's very well kept, so um, there's not much to fault with it. While we're at the traffic lights, I'll take the opportunity to try out all the electrics in the car. Um, the stereo, of course, being one. I've just realized that our editor, Elvis, probably can't use any of that audio because of copyright infringement. Um, but you want to make sure that everything functions as it should. The radio works, CD player works, AUX works, etc. Same with the air conditioning and the heater. I've got the AC on at the moment, it works quite well, but you want to check the heater function as well, even though it's a really hot day here in Sydney, you want to know that the heater functions. Always keeping an eye on the temperature gauge in a car I'm test driving the first time, you want to know that the car can maintain a steady operating temperature without getting too hot or too cool. Um, both can indicate different problems, and again, that's up to you whether it's something you feel comfortable taking on. Now we're coming up to a nice open stretch of road here and I'm going to perform a brake test. I'm going to get up to about 80 kilometers an hour and I'm going to slow down. I'm not going to stand on the brakes but I am going to stop firmly and I'm feeling for any shudder or vibration through the brake pedal or through the steering wheel. Um, this can indicate a variety of things, most commonly warped brake discs, um, but again something worth knowing when it comes to the negotiation for price. from the suspension. Now this car is very tight, um, so I don't really have any examples to show you. However, and again, this is one of those things that is usually easily solved and um, usually at a cost of no more than a couple of hundred dollars if it's a worn bush or something like that. But again, it's worth negotiating on with the seller uh, or worth considering whether it's even something you wanna take on if there's a better car out there on the market. I'm not saying drive a seller's car into a pothole, but roads that have a bit of an uneven surface are perfect for this. Any suspension noise in a road like this is going to 
tracking into the gutter, no pulling left or right. All in all, feels fantastic. Probably my only complaint with this car is the steering wheel is plastic and it's not particularly nice to hold on to, otherwise it's great. Visibility is wonderful in a car the size of a peanut.